I am, Doc. Just got my propane tank from the junkyard. It's a sweet one, didn't have to pay a whole lot. Seemed a little heavy, I don't know if something's inside or not. So right here we have a 500 gallon propane tank. This is the one that we got with the Hawkins Energy boiler. So what, what we're thinking is on like a hot day where we're not really calling for a lot of heat in the shop or the house, we can uh, circulate water to this tank so we can have hot water stored. And that way when we do need it, it's almost like on call to where you're not making your wood boiler work as hard to heat up all that water if the water's already heated up. So this is just what we're starting with. Just the old propane tank. They get rid of these when they expire. So, yep. All right, today we're gonna build, uh, we're building for our shop a 500 gallon propane tank that we got from our local uh, salvage yard. They got a ton of them. And we're gonna put a heating coil inside of it and so it's got a supply and return. Just got done cleaning the tank. The tank, I just cut the end out of it, which is gonna be the bottom. Got in there and did a clean, got all that nasty stuff out. Because the coil's gotta go up in, you know, weld the bottom, pressure check it. And then I've got legs I'm gonna make all that angle iron. What the idea is here is, is thermal energy, almost like a battery bank. We're gonna to try to store hot water in our shop allow it to circulate through the shop and our boiler outside will supply the coil with uh, very hot water that'll, that'll heat this water up. Um, and then we'll insulate it, you'll see us, we're gonna insulate it and it'll be stood up tomorrow is, uh, is the idea. Why we wanna do it is, is less wood and um, we don't have to be, if we're not home for a day or two, uh, it's still, the shop's still hot because we've got so much supply bank to call from. So, a lot of people are doing it, and we're gonna do it this weekend. All right, we're back again. Here's the coil finished up. Um, I just, as you can see, I just kind of soldered in a couple clamps to hold that return in place. Um, these will be welded in to the cap. Uh, so that's the next step. But I wanted to show you in here, what I chose to do is, is I chose to weld, I don't know if you can see. I welded in two bolts. That copper tube is gonna be zip tied to the, to the coil, just to keep it centered, keep it from working the fittings at the bottom. Once it's all in place, when I stand it up, I don't want any stress on that. And I, I know there's a lot of different ways you could probably hang that. I, I, I just wanted copper to copper. I didn't want corrosion. And it just needs to hold it in the center. So that's a simple thing I did. I took two three-quarter bolts and weld them in and put a pipe on it. A couple of things I wanted to show you. I am I'm right now, I'm, I'm just doing my pressure check on it. And basically running about 25 pounds, PSI pounds. That's kind of what it looks like when it's all done. I gave myself enough room and I ended up having to sweat the fitting at the end again because it had a little pinhole leak. And you gotta really think about that when you're, when you're building the, this, this kind of stuff is, is do you, are you gonna leave yourself access room uh, to do your test? And I, I would definitely say you better do that or, or you'll regret it. Um, so these are my two lines that are gonna supply. I ended up putting uh, right down in here, I, I put a, a, a return line. This is gonna be just a, a miscellaneous line and if I attach another tank, I'll have it. And then I ended up, um, I'm gonna suck warm water out of here and I'm gonna have my thermal probe here that's gonna to communicate to the boiler, you know, heat her up or turn it off. And then down here, um, Water filler 
and I'm going to show you later how I'm going to make a float level because it's going to be an open system right now. But if I choose to go closed, I'll have a blow off valve on here, just like your hot water heater would have. Um, and uh, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, where we're at on this project. Uh, I'm going to show you more. I'm going to weld it up. I'm going to pressure check the whole tank next. I thought I'd show here a little bit. Again, I had to make my weld um, right around this uh, fitting here. So I re-pressure checked. I'm re-pressure checking. You, you really want to consider that too because your sweat on your copper um, can be affected. And so I just really recommend re-pressure check it. Then I also recommend when you do a weld on a bung, I started at the bottom. Let me try to get you. I started down here and worked my weld right around and then I burned, if you can see, try to get a good angle here for you. Right here, burned around and then I came by it and down. It's really important to go by where you started from. You're burning that in, and then if there's any debris or, or junk that you're burning out on your weld, you're bringing it down past it. Um, pretty much do all my welds like that. I haven't had any issue. Here's another one right here. Um, you can see where I started here, came all the way around, past it. And um, I'm using a sinker wave, or Michael uh, Miller Matic 250, and here's my settings right now. For welding those in. Everybody um, got the tank upright as you can see. It's uh, how, I, how I did it just to make it simple I used angle wire. I lifted it however you can lift yours at home. I, we have a skid loader and then I just kind of had a um, lead go off to the side once I got it square. Squared up my legs, welded them on. I'm going to put some more weld on that. Um, and I ended up on my bottom, I welded that with uh, our stick welder, our TIG stick welder. Um, and I used a 7018 rod, there's our welder right there. I used a 7018 rod and just for really good penetration. That propane tank, that's, that metal is contaminated, so you really got to burn all that crap out and then pressure check it. And I did that, found a few pin holes that were related to that, uh, how nasty that metal really is when you really burn it into it. Um, so here we are in the project, gonna insulate it next. Uh, everything's been pressure checked, legs are on, and we'll keep you updated. We finally got the tank installed, as you can see. Uh, double insulated it. We did an R19 running this way, and then we wrapped it with, um, R19 that's used in pole barns or steel buildings. It's got that plastic on the outside, really good look at the end. And then we just used wire, kind of hold it all together. And then we wrapped it again with some clear plastic that we had, just to kind of make it a clean look as best we could. Um, and at the transition point, all we use is a banner so you didn't see all the folded edges in that. It's working system. We uh, put it in this week heated up to 160 degrees um, and our shop and we turned the boiler off last night so our shop um, which is 5,000 square foot has been running just off the water in here through a pump through the floor for uh, 24 hours already it's lost about 15 degrees of temperature 15 to 20 degrees of temperature but we think we can run at least three days at 160 uh, maybe more. We're going to find out. It's going to be the test. We'll let you guys know. Uh, pretty simple. Pump's running off the top. I put the return on the bottom, but I'm going to change that even though I got a check valve because there's so much head pressure. I think I'm better off. I had welded a bung way at the top. I'm just going to bring my return water and dump it in the top. That's the only change I'm going to make because it, the bottom uh, kind of adds pressure for the water to come back in and, and it's working, but I just think it's a better idea. We're just using the Aquastat here. Uh, and then that communicates to the pump on the boiler. You can see it's at 140. Uh, what temperature differentials? I want the boiler to kick on and to run. Our plan is 
use this for three days at least, then fire up the boiler on the third day or fourth day, heat the water back up, the boiler only has to run for one day, and we're saving three days of wood, uh, possibly four days of wood, and the maintenance to, to load it. So I'm really happy so far. Put a float at the top. Uh, I think you can see. Well, we'll get a camera shot up there for you. Um, hey, all those in question, I just know just within 24 hours, uh, this shop is warmer than it's ever been. Um, and I really love it. I think it's a great way to go. This buffer storage tank. Uh, and I think by the time we bought the coil, the tank, everything, we're still under like three, $350. So it's a great way to go if you want to build one yourself. Thank you.